the evidence that these 12 um, UNRWA employees were somehow implicated in the 7 October atrocities committed by uh, Hamas in Israel, that evidence is presumably relatively strong because the UN has uh, dismissed these 12 people. They're leading an investigation. The Secretary General has made the comments that, that we heard. UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, and it finds itself right at the centre of a very big controversy after Israel has accused several members of uh, being involved in the Hamas attacks on the 7th of um, no, October. Now, the UK has become the latest country to suspend funding for this US agency following the United States, Canada, Australia and Italy. Meanwhile, UNRWA has sacked those accused and has launched an investigation. Uh, the UN Secretary General has expressed his concerns. Let's listen to what his spokesman had to say. Any employee of UNRWA who is involved in acts of terror will be held accountable, including through criminal prosecution. A number of things have to happen at the same time. UNRWA is, uh, has to ask OIOS uh, to do this investigation. The Commissioner General, I think, has taken very swift and strong measures uh, right away. Uh, at the same time, our humanitarian work needs to continue. Now, we did um, bid for an UNRWA representative, but they told us that they are not giving interviews right now. But joining us, I'm very grateful to have him on the line, is Sir Mark Lyle Grant. Sir Mark is the former National Security Advisor and Permanent Representative of the UK to the United Nations. Sir Mark, good afternoon. Thanks very much for joining us. Good afternoon. What do you make of these allegations? Well, it's a very concerning story. Um, clearly, the evidence has come from the Israelis, and the Israelis have been trying to sort of denigrate UNRWA for many, many years um, because they don't like them working uh, in Gaza. But nonetheless, it appears that the evidence that these 12 um, UNRWA employees were somehow implicated in the 7 October atrocities committed by uh, Hamas in Israel, that evidence is presumably relatively strong because the UN has uh, dismissed these 12 people. They're leading an investigation. The Secretary General has made the comments that, that we heard. And a number of countries, including now the United Kingdom, has temporarily sort of suspended uh, their funding for UNRWA. So, Yes, clearly this is extremely serious allegations, but I don't think we're quite at the end of the story yet. Yeah, and it's worth um, saying in terms of where these reports are, are coming from, um, it's reported that um, speaking to a news agency, a senior Israeli official said that Shin Bet, which is one of the uh, security services, and the IDF have provided um, information which alleged active participation of UNRWA staffers along with the use of agencies' vehicles and facilities on the 7th of October. The official told this Axios news agency there were strong and corroborated um, intelligence. Now, um, so Mark, th there might be some of my listeners who are thinking, well, you know, are we just going to take um, these allegations on face value? Uh, as you alluded to, you know, um, Israel's obviously very critical of, of some of the work that, that has been done um, in, in in Gaza. I mean, how careful do um, other countries have to be about completely taking these at, at, at face value right away and, and and completely withdrawing funding? Yes, I don't think it's an easy decision at all um, for a number of reasons. I mean, UNRWA is not the only game in town in Gaza, but it's the most important. Um, it's got 13,000 employees uh, in Gaza providing you know, essential um, shelter, uh, education, social services, health uh, support to the Palestinian refugees in Gaza. Um, they've had over 100 uh, employees killed by the Israeli bombardment over the last uh, three months. So it's very important that in suspending the funding for this particular UN agency, um, it doesn't mean the end of uh, British government humanitarian support to the Palestinians, because that would be uh, disastrous. Yes, Britain provide, has provided about £20 million, uh, something like that, to UNRWA uh, in recent years. That is dwarfed by the Americans, who've given over sort of $300 million. 
Um, but nonetheless, it's a significant sum of money and they will not want uh, people to starve and not get yeah. these uh, essential supplies by cutting off the funding. Now, there are other UN agencies active in Gaza, like UNICEF, like the World Food Programme, etc. So it's important that that funding continues and the British government finds a way to get the necessary aid to the Palestinians, because the Palestinians should not suffer for the fact that a few of the um, UNRWA employees might have been implicated in the barbarity of uh, 7 October. And so, Mark, what does this do for trust in, in the UN and the reputation of the UN? Because that has been buffeted around quite a lot. There's quite a lot of people looking at the UN and thinking, what is the point of the UN? And these are you know, serious allegations. Well, the UN, um, the Israel has never had any trust in the UN um, for, for 50 odd years. So uh, that is not a, a surprise. Um, but I think it is worrying at a time when the uh, the world order, the rules-based international order of which the UN is at the sort of summit, um, is under attack in a whole variety of ways, whether it's, you know, Russian invasion of Ukraine or use of chemical weapons or, or I Iran trying to get nuclear weapons, etc. All these different uh, threats to the rules-based international order. So any uh, damaging of the reputation of the UN and its wider family um, is, I think, extremely damaging and worrying for the world going forward. Yeah, and as you say, an incredibly fragile moment uh, in broader geopolitics. And so, Mark, just uh, final um, questions I wanted to, to put to you was, of course, we, we had the, the, the big um, interim ruling from the International um, Court of uh, Justice, the ICJ, um, yesterday. Um, the, the UK has issued a, a statement saying that we respect the role and the independence of the ICG, um, but we have considerable concerns. Uh, and the government has said, look, our view is that Israel's action in Gaza cannot be described as a genocide. Um, and they thought that the, the decision to bring the case was wrong and provocative. Do you think that is the, the sort of right approach from, from the United Kingdom? Or do you think this interim judgment is going to put more pressure on the UK and America to take a much tougher line with Israel? Well, I think, you know, the ICJ did not find that Israel was guilty of genocide, um, but they have agreed to sort of look at that issue and, and that will take several years before a final judgment is, is made. And they did not ask, uh, demand that Israel has an immediate ceasefire as the South African government uh, wanted. So in that sense, um, the South Africans didn't achieve all that they wanted. But nonetheless, the uh, interim measures that were announced by the court are quite damning about Israel. And they will now have to, uh, if they do abide by the judgment, will have to conduct the military operation in Gaza in a different way. So I'm pleased that the British government has said that they will respect the judgment. I think that is absolutely the right thing to do because the ICJ, as we were just discussing, is another absolutely key element in the rules-based international order. And for countries like Britain to start ignoring their judgments is very damaging to that order. And one of the um, sort of measures or asks is that Israel makes a sort of report back in a month's time. Now, we heard from Benjamin Netanyahu, I spoke with one of his uh, spokespeople yesterday, they're very much rejecting um, this uh, ruling, as you can imagine. But is that the point at which Britain and other countries which have signed up to the you know conventions against genocide and, con and signed up to these conventions, if the Israelis do not produce this report in a month's time, is that the point where Britain and America and others should say, look, you do have to abide by, by uh, this interim ruling? I think so, yes. I mean, I, I'm not sure that Israel will completely ignore the ruling. Um, uh, I thought Benjamin Netanyahu was quite careful in his public comments in response to the judgment. Um, they're saying that they are abiding by international law. They sent a very high uh, profile legal team to defend the case of the ICJ. They weren't just dismissing it out of hand. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did, in fact, produce some sort of report after a month as the court has asked. But any, irrespective of whether they do or they don't, you've noticed over recent weeks that the British government's uh, public tone and probably private tone to the Israeli leadership anyway has got stronger because they are deeply concerned about the way Israel is 
uh, killing civilians in Gaza. Now over 26,000 people in Gaza have been killed by the Israelis and the manner in which this campaign is going. So I would expect the British government to be toughening up its language um, as time goes on, yes. Okay. Well, look, Sir Mark, um, always really interesting speaking with you. Thank you very much for your time. That's Sir Mark Lyle Grant, former National Security Advisor and Permanent Representative of the UK to the United Nations.